So next with replication, I want to talk a little bit about push and pull subscriptions. And this is one of those things that I see a lot of people get caught up on it, thinking, well, what server is going to be doing all the work? And but that's really not the right way to look at it. Push or pull subscriptions really just define where the job is going to run that kicks off the work. OK, so if the subscriber for any of the replication types needs to reach out to the distributor to get to the publisher for anything, all that work has to happen on the subscriber. The subscriber looks at what they've got and they go and ask the publisher for whatever information is needed. For instance, with merge replication, it says these changes have occurred. Let's push these back to the publisher. Well, that work's always going to happen on the subscriber, independent of whether you, you're using push or pull. The difference is with pull subscription, it assumes that the subscriber has a SQL Server agent or other job running locally that's going to trigger that work to happen. A push subscription means that the publisher has the SQL Server agent job that's going to reach out to the subscriber and trigger it to go do the work. So the only thing that's really happening uh, different between push versus pull is where the SQL Server agent job is being run that triggers it. And if it's being run on the publisher, it's not really doing any more work than just the agent job. It just reaches out to the subscriber and says, okay, do your thing. Now, when I say do your thing, I mean, do your subscription, do whatever work is needed there in order to synchronize replication at this point. Depending on the replication type, that may vary. But um, it's, it's just where the SQL Server agent jobs is being run to kick it off is the only real difference between push versus pull subscriptions. Now, with that, uh, a lot of people ask, well, what version of SQL Server do you need to work with replication? Well, pretty much works with all versions of SQL Server, meaning standard, enterprise, web, and even SQL Server Express. However, I've never, or I, you cannot run the publisher or the distributor on SQL Server Express because those have to have SQL Server agent jobs that run to maintain it all. Now, you can run subscribers, and I work in environments where we have 30 or 40 subscribers that are all running on SQL Server Express. And that's where if you're going to use push replication, push subscriptions, you then have all of the jobs running on the publisher on the SQL Server agent that reach out to the sub subscribers and trigger them to do the work rather than each of the subscribers having to have SQL Server agent running there because the SQL Server agent is not available on SQL Server Express Edition. But it works great uh, with SQL Express as long as you're not dealing with too large amounts of data. I mean, as long as the database is capable of running on SQL Server Express, replication works fine with it there too, just not on the publisher or the distributor. Now, you might say, well, what if the connection is down uh, and I'm doing push subscription, meaning the distributor and the publisher are triggering the subscriber to go do the work? Well, how is it going to trigger go, to go do the work? Well, it's not. But the point is, if your connection's down, there's no reason for it to go trigger any work that it's going to talk to the subscriber or it's going to talk back to the publisher with because it's not going to be able to do that, do its job anyway. So when it's down, um, yeah, when the connection is down, the it doesn't do anything, and it's not going to do anything anyway, even if you had uh, everything running out at each of those subscribers. So there's really no functionality difference there other than where the SQL Server agent jobs are being run with push versus pull replication. 